In the deep sea off the coast of New Zealand lies the Wakari Volcano, home to one of the most terrifying creatures in the ocean, the 20-foot pyrosome worm. This creature is actually a colony of creatures made up of thousands of individual organisms known as zooids. These zooids banded together to form a long tubular body. Pyrosomes are planktonic colonies of small invertebrates called tunicates, including sea squirts, selfs, and other related aquatic invertebrates. These colonies consist of identical clones of tunicates joined together Together to form a worm-like creature that drifts through the sea. Pyrosomes exist in a wide range of shapes and sizes, varying from microscopic wow. to monumental. One notable species is the giant pyrosome, or pyrosoma spinosum, which pyro means fire, soma means body, and spinosum, well that just kind of means thorny. So you gotta thorny fire body floating around the sea. These pyrosome can reach lengths exceeding 30 feet. Tunicates possess a unique characteristic which are born with the notochord, which is a cartilaginous rod that basically holds their body together. However, as they progress beyond the larval stage, they lose that notochord and the adult tunicates resemble boneless invertebrates. Upon the first glance, you might be surprised to discover that tunicates are more closely related to us than to jellyfish. Weird. Tunicates derive their name from the protective outer membrane called a tunic, which gives them a clear and gelatinous appearance. Bethnic tunicates, often referred to as sea squirts, earn their name due to the water they squirt when disturbed. On the other hand, planktonic tunicates, known as salps, are drifting organisms. The tunicates involved in pyrosome formation are closely related to salps. In a pyrosome, each individual tunicate is called a zooid. These zooids possess their own digestive systems, complete with an incurrent and excurrent siphon, or filter feeding. If any zooids are wounded or killed, the remaining zooids have the remarkable ability to regenerate and create more copies of themselves. These colonies move through shared jet propulsion, expelling water through the excurrent siphon to propel themselves through the water. In this way, the entire pyrosome colony shares the same locomotive and excretory systems. It's a sea-like human centipede. Yuck. Bioluminescence is a remarkable feature of pyrosomes. Each zooid produces its own light, which serves various purposes such as facilitating nighttime feeding and startling potential predators. Pyrosomes typically appear clear or milky white, but when illuminated, they can display vibrant colors such as pink, orange, green, and even blue. Giant pyrosomes are found worldwide, but they are more commonly encountered in tropical areas with high primary productivity. Their preferred food source is phytoplankton, and much like whales, they feed by engulfing large amounts of plankton-filled water through their incurrent siphon. They are very active during dusk, and these giant pyrosomes coincide with the nocturnal vertical migration of plankton communities. Their presence is influenced by ocean chemistry, currents, and temperature, making warmer waters with abundant phytoplankton the most likely location to spot one. Encountering a giant pyrosome is truly a rare and remarkable sight. You guys ever hear of sea serpents? Well, these might be the pyrosomes. Sea serpent tales have long been part of mythical folklore. Legend of water monsters date back centuries. From the biblical leviathan to Japanese water dragons to the Norse mythology's Midgard serpent. These stories were passed down and adapted throughout time. Historical sea charts like Olaus Magnus Carta Marina depicted vast oceans teeming with water horses, reptilian creatures, and fearsome giant sea snakes. The Historia Animalium, published by naturalist Conrad Gesner in 1558, even dedicated a section to marine monsters. This included the depiction of a sea serpent by Magnus. These sea monsters were likely early attempts to explain the sightings of strange creatures at sea. As interest in our oceans grew and the fossil revolution of the 19th and 20th century unfolded, more monstrous sea creatures from prehistoric times were discovered. Many of these findings aligned with the descriptions of sea monsters found in old myths and legends and sightings of alleged sea serpents persist to this day. But in reality, the ocean is teeming with various sea serpents, ranging from sea crates to oarfish, and even water tornadoes. And among these giant creatures, we find the giant pyrosome. It's a real sea serpent. The giant pyrosomes are elusive creatures that remain unfamiliar to most people outside the marine biology field. They are predominantly observed by divers and occasionally spotted feeding near the water's surface. These otherworldly organisms possess gelatinous bodies resembling giant featureless worms, without any limbs or distinct characteristics. Even those acquainted with sea 
skirts at the beach would unlikely associate them with these enormous sea worms. The sight of a giant pyrosome can be both mysterious and unsettling. Before the marine biology revolution of the late 19th and 20th centuries, a massive tunicate would have perplexed any sailor at sea. But we now understand that giant pyrosomes are far from being vicious sea snakes. They are entirely passive animals, lacking a central nervous system. As a result, they would never attack a ship or even be aware of its presence. However, a 19th century sailor might interpret such a strange creature. After a long day at sea, influenced by the tales of the old serpents, one's imagination could easily run wild. Even a modern day sailor unfamiliar with marine invertebrates might mistake a giant pyrosome for a fearsome sea serpent. Most sea serpent candidates, as we know them, are harmless animals, with no inclination to harm humans. The oarfish, for example, is another passive filter feeder. If a ship were to collide with a large animal, the resulting damage might give rise to tales of a brutal attack. But in the case of the giant pyrosome, a collision with the ship is more likely to harm the pyrosome itself rather than the vessel. Nevertheless, the Zewids would simply regenerate and continue their journey. In 1884, the crew of the Steamboat Churchill reported the sighting of a horrifying sea snake off the coast of Port Natal. According to their description, the creature appeared to be covered with large seashells and possessed a big hairy head. From the ship's perspective, the head and the tail seemed to be 60 feet apart. The animal surfaced only briefly before disappearing beneath the ship and very little additional information about the encounter is available. Most of the details of the sighting come from Bernard Huvelman's book, In the Wake of the Sea Serpents. Could this startling sight may have been of giant pyrosome? I don't know, but pyrosomes lack heads or tails, and they certainly do not possess hair or other distinctive features. The fine hair on the surface of pyrosomes can create the illusion of a head covered in hair, especially when viewed from a ship or from the surface. To someone who has only encountered seashells and not tunicates, the individual tunics of the pyrosome zoo might appear shell-like, especially when displaying the vibrant bioluminescence. This effect resembles light dancing off iridescent shells. The area, formerly known as Port Natal, is situated along South Africa's coast, where the Indian and Southern Oceans converge. The region experiences an average sea surface temperature of 77 degrees Fahrenheit or 25 degrees Celsius, with minimal seasonal variation. It's highly productive due to the influx of nutrients from the Antarctic waters below. These conditions make it an ideal foraging location for giant pyrosomes. Wow, it is theoretically possible for a colonial pyrosome to reach a length of 60 feet. Such a size would be extremely rare. The average length of a giant pyrosome is approximately 25 feet, with a maximum recorded length of 30 feet. However, estimating length or distance accurately while at sea can be extremely challenging. The human mind's eye cannot always be trusted, especially when startled by the sighting of a sea serpent. Will we ever know for certain if the Churchill Sea Serpent was in fact a giant pyrosome? Perhaps not. Nevertheless, as our understanding of oceanic diversity grows, new interpretations of old sea monster tales emerge. Sea serpents come in various forms, often differing from the depictions imagined by ancient voyagers and naturalists. The giant pyrosome serve as a prime example of extraordinary sea monsters that inhabit our oceans. With its alien appearance, mesmerizing bioluminescence, and captivating undulations as it drifts across the sea, it remains a fantastic creature worthy of enthralling sea tales. Worms! <laughs>